Welcome to Bennett Fishing, folks, your number one resource for lake trout jigging. I'm Josh, and today we're going to go over sonar settings. So I'm running a fairly expensive sonar today, but I've run cheaper sonars in the past. This one is very expensive, but you can do the same thing with a cheap $100 sonar, which you can sync literally to your phone. So I'm going to leave the link for that one below. I'll put up a picture of it right here. It's one of those castable ones you can literally just drag it behind your kayak. And we're using spot lock in the front of the boat. So let me show you all my settings on how to jig for lake trout and hopefully we catch one on camera. Uh, but I'm gonna show you what they look like on sonar when we're moving and when we're stationary, which is on spot lock. And I'm also gonna show you what bait looks like on 2D and on live scope. So I am running live scope just because that's a little easier for me to show both here. My sonar is the Garmin 90, 923XSV, which is a GPS map. Uh, that's because so I can record the screen and do a bunch of other funky stuff with live scope. You don't need to do any of that. So let's go right into normal 2D sonar. So a lot of 2D sonars will look just like this. And a couple of things that we want to do is we want to put our gain on medium. We're in like 40 feet of water, less than 45 feet of water. I found fish here yesterday, so that's why I'm doing the how-to video here. It makes it a little bit easier for me. Our frequency, we want to run in the 200 hertz range. So 200 kilohertz has a cone of about 18 to 20 degrees. So it's gonna shoot straight down like this. Now, some settings on some sonars will run 83, which is a very wide cone. And so it's gonna shoot out like an upside down ice cream cone like this. The problem with wide cones is, is, is they're not as accurate. They have a little bit of a dead area, fluffy area as they call it. They're not as sharp as a small little cone looking. It's great for searching. 83 is great for searching. 200 is great for vertical jigging once you've found the fish. So I usually try to look at high percentage areas with 200, that way I can stop right on those fish and mark them. So we're sharpshooting, we're jigging for fish, which is key. So we're running 200 and you can run chirp if you want. So what chirp is doing is it's running from 83 to 200 and it's running up and down those ranges to basically get a combination of all of the different frequencies to create a really clear image for you. We're gonna to go to sonar setup. We're gonna scroll speed. And I wanna turn it down to show you what that looks like. See how it's like boom, 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 really slow. We wanna max that out. We want scroll speed. We want the fastest, punchiest information as possible. And they're all called the same on lower ants and hummingbird roughly. Uh, appearance, we want a scope turned on, so amplitude scope. That's that little typewriter looking thing on the bottom right hand side of the screen here. And what that does is it allows us to look in that far bottom right corner. That's where the information is going to be the most accurate or anywhere on that side. That's going to be where it's the most live. Everything scrolling to my left here or to my right, I'll tell you which one is past history. Um, we want to use that to figure out what the fish are liking and disliking at any given moment. So we're gonna make sure our A-scopes turn on. Color gain is entirely up to you. I like to run it fairly high. I like to see stuff in the water column uh, as much as possible. So if I turn my color gain down, right? So see that little fuzzy stuff at like 16 feet? And I'm gonna to point to it right here if I can. Back, back, back. I can't really. Actually, I can point to it with the GoPro footage right here. What that is, if I turn that color gain back up, sonar setup, appearance, color gain back up, I'm fairly sure that's the thermocline because it stays consistent throughout the lake. Uh, we had a few, a little wind in the last couple of days here. And what you're seeing, see how the bottom's getting a little bit fuzzy? I'm pretty sure there's a lake trout down there right now. But we'll go over the settings real quick. Sonar setup, appearance. I like that blue color palette. It's really punchy, even if it's bright and sunny out right now, it's overcast, so it doesn't really matter. But if it's bright and sunny out, that color palette just pops. It just, that's the color scheme I run. It's never failed me. That's the original one that they came back with uh, a long time ago. It's always been that color scheme. Uh, beam width is 19. So beam width, we can adjust, and that'll adjust our kilohertz. So 16 will be a very, very tight cone. So it's looking really like this. And so if you look at 90 degrees is here, 45 is here, half of 45 is, is what? 
like this right here. And then we're looking at like really, really, really tight like that. So we're looking at a very small, we want to bump that up to at least a 20 degree cone. Uh, and like I said, we're looking at that upside down ice cream cone underneath the boat. And my particular sonar, and I'll show you footage of it right now from my cell phone, is right here. And that is level to the bottom of the boat. That is very crucial. Make sure you read your manual and I'll actually show you a video of this outside of the boat right now on its trailer. It's level, not to the bottom of the boat, but to the surface of the lake. So if you have a boat that rides really high up in the front, you wanna make sure you level that when you're in the water. Uh, Hummingbird has a whole manual on how to do that, where you like put a level on the side of the boat with pennies, or what you can do is download the Bubble Level app on your phone, and that'll tell you how many degrees your boat sits at right now. And then you wanna set your trailer to that degree and then level your sonar based on that. It's a little complicated, uh, but you can find it on the Hummingbird manual. Uh, Garmin didn't really say anything about it when I installed this particular 2D transducer, but what it's trying to tell you to do is, if that sonar is kicked up like this at all, so here's the back of the boat, if it's kicked up at all, it shoots out and you won't get a clear image. If it's kicked forward at all, it'll shoot out and it won't get a clear image. You want it nice and perpendicular, uh, perpendicular up and down. So there's a lake trout actually suspended right now. So we're gonna record and we're gonna drop down. And of course it's raining because that's New Hampshire for this year. Don't know why. And on the left-hand side of the screen, what you're looking at is LiveScope or Garmin LiveScope Plus. And that just helps me, really helps me catch more fish. But as far as you guys are concerned, I want you to only look at the right-hand side of the screen here. And so you can see my jig at the bottom right-hand side of the screen literally going up and down as fast as possible there. So we want, I snap the rod, you want that thing to go up, right? So I wanna be jigging the tip of my rod in this back right corner, ideally like right here, and have the sonar facing me. I don't have it facing me right now just because I have the GoPro looking at it. And when we're dropping down the technique for lake trout, and I'm gonna leave a video right here on the, uh, my favorite technique jigging for lake trout. I'm gonna do it right now anyways. What we want to do is hold that jig just above bottom. And the best way to do that is one, to touch bottom. So let your jig hit bottom. Go tight with your line and then lift up like a foot or where you can just see your jig on your sonar. So what will happen, and I'm gonna use a rod for example, hopefully this camera can see it, is if you're, If the bottom of your lake is at an angle, which mine is angled up like this, if it's at an angle like this, or at an angle like this, that cone will come down and it'll stop at this high point right here. And it will miss all of this area right here. And the lake trout will hide right in that area most of the time. So what you wanna do is hide, bring your jig up into this good zone and wait for a lake trout to come up and see your jig. So that's the disadvantage of running 2D uh, and the a huge advantage of running live scope because live scope can see at any angle. So we're in, a, we're in a pretty good area, but there doesn't happen to be any lake trout around us right now, like at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off spot lock and I'm gonna reel up and I'm gonna putt around and show you what a lake trout looks like on 2D imaging, which is that, that right hand side. So we're gonna turn the gas motor on. We've turned off spot lock. And I'm gonna idle around here and I'm gonna show you what lake trout look like. I'm gonna have to go closer to shore here. Because the lake trout have been fairly shallow in this lake today. So there's, there's a pair of them coming up right now. We should go over them right now. There they are. So that's what that standard art should look like going right there. So, and the reason it looks like an arch is because of that cone. So it starts on the front edge of the cone and it sees it as far away. We just crossed over another one at the front edge of the cone. And then it gets darker at the back edge of the cone. And then it tapers off at the other edge of the cone. So yep, there's another one on bottom that just squished down. And then we just drove over a ball of bait. So that's what that looks like. They're at just below 20 feet. And we're gonna drive over another giant group of smelt that are on the bottom there. 
right there. So all that fuzziness is, we have rainbow smelt here in New Hampshire, but Cisco's and owl wives will all look like that. There'll be bigger marks, marks depending on bigger bait. And so we're gonna drop down and keep our rod tip pointed towards that back sonar as much as possible. And if we're not seeing our jig go down, that means we are not dropping down in the right position. So we want to reel up. Now that our boat's done situating and spinning, and drop down right below it. See how it's a nice, hard red return? And we want to stop our jig just above bottom, like I was saying before. And we want to wait until a lake trout comes into that cone angle so we can see him. And once we see him, we want to run away. So hopefully the, well, we got a couple coming in right now. And this is the way I jigged for the last three, four years before I had live scope. And it's very, very effective. It takes a little more pa patience with 2D. And what you're seeing is that noise on the, on the right hand side there is when I rip the jig up, I'm actually making air bubbles. So I have two lake trout chasing me right now. One's still hot on me. Got him. Don't be scared to set that hook multiple times on him either. It's not gonna hurt him. You're just gonna pin that barb in them more. Like I said, these aren't very big lake trout, but they are lake trout. So there is a beautiful lake trout, white, tipped fins. They look up and they smell down in my opinion. So you want to hold that jig just above their head so they can, there's the fish, just above their head so they can come up and see it and smash it. So there are my settings for your sonar for lake trout jigging. Now if you want to search around, switch it to 83. If you want to like fine tune, if you're in a high percentage spot like I am on a point where there's bait, um, you want to switch it down over to 200. So if you, found, if you found this video useful, make sure you leave a comment below what you learned in the video. And if you really want to support the channel, make sure you visit bennettfishing.company.site. That's where I sell merch and all the baits that I'm making and using in this video right now. I hand make them specifically for lake trout jigging and casting, if you want to call it that. Uh, and also, if you want to learn more about lake trout jigging, I'm going to leave a, a beginner video right here and an advanced video right here and also a playlist of all of the lake trout videos I've released that teach you how to catch more lake trout.